Welcome to Standing in the Sunlight with Cynthia Rose. We are all on an ever unfolding unique journey. Join Cynthia Rose as she begins her unique perspective to all that is meaningful. Topics and personalities that support your path, bringing inspiration and passion and heart-centered ways to live a more fulfilling life. A down-to-earth and uplifting sharing of what it means to be spiritual, creative, and living life to the fullest by standing in the sunlight. Born an intuitive medium, Cynthia Rose is also an ordained minister, singer, astrologer, educator, and writer. She has studied the intuitive and healing arts for over 40 years. Rise up and stand in your sunlight now with Cynthia Rose. Well, hello there, wherever you are in the world today. I am excited about this show today. I'm Cynthia Rose McCaw, your host of Standing in the Sunlight, where we talk to people who are standing in their sunlight, encouraging you to do so as well. Uh, I just wanted to mention, if you're in the Denver area, in Lakewood, Colorado, I have a, a gallery demonstration of mediumship um, on uh, tomorrow night, if you're still, uh, there's still tickets if you're available, and I'll also be in Chicago on June the 2nd uh, through the Body, Mind, Spirit Fair with another medium, Kim Moore. So if you're in either of those places and would like to uh, join us, please do. And um, you can connect with me on Facebook under Cynthia Rose Medium and CynthiaRoseMedium.com. Uh, I'm very excited today. We'll be talking to Richard Beaumont, who is a human design expert. He's calling us all the way from England. Today he's made so it's evening for him, and I think he is on the line. Yes, I am. Hi, Cynthia. Hi. Nice to hear you. <laughs> human design is basically there to, to help people to understand who they are, but it's a deep, deep science. This is really the thing to understand. It's it really is um, a, a very accurate science. Um, as you know, I was part of um, uh, Kindred Spirit magazine for 20 years. I ran a Mind Body Spirit magazine, pretty much the best one in England. Um, went all over the world with it. And I saw a lot of things, interviewed a lot of people. And in the end, once I sold the magazine, human design was the only thing that I remained studying and it's become my whole life because it's so incredible. <laughs> wow. And it's always accurate. I've been all over the world. Wherever I look at this chart, it, it fits to the person. They recognize themselves. And if they recognize themselves, then they are more likely to follow the strategy. There's a strategy and authority that every, you know, everyone has a way of knowing how to make correct decisions. And that's the most exciting thing. It's not just information. It's practical, and the, the following that, your own authority, no one else is, no one outside of you, your own authority leads you into the life that you were designed to live, and in that way, it fits. You know, it's without resistance. That, that's its joy. Well, interesting you say your own authority, because I know with Saturn going into Capricorn, it is a time when people need to know what their own beliefs, their own authority, like really listen deeper. It is a very, it's an overarching need in this time. So perhaps having a human design chart could help someone to identify or even recognize something that was already there, but maybe they hadn't had it mentioned that way. So. Well, this is the wonderful thing. There's a whole side of us that is unconscious. And yet the, these aspects shine, shine up in the chart so we can see, you know, what is going on underneath in a way for someone and then describe it. So there really is this recognition that works. And all I can tell you is that life gets, life becomes more your life by, by looking at it. And it's not something they have to believe in. It's something they can experiment with. You know, you actually do find things work better <laughs> if you if you operate correctly according to how how you're designed and we're all unique this is a time when i agree with you this is a time when people need to find themselves this is a very very important time for humankind uh we're coming to the end of a cycle and this is a time for human beings really to flower 
in their uniqueness, in their individuation. Um, and we're all different, even twins. I mean, I'm a twin and I have a different chart to my twin. <laughs> I've, I've done readings for twins that had just three minutes between them. And again, there's difference underneath the surface. So it, it is a, a, we're a pattern in a larger program. That's how we see things. Wow. And, and this came about from uh, a man well, sitting in meditation or? Well, no, it came from a man walking his dog <laughs> on Corfu. <laughs> Uh, he went to he went to where he was staying, and he was living in a kind of a ruina, uh, which was uh, in, in Spain. It's a kind of a place that's kind of deserted, but it was quiet, and he, he liked being alone. But he had no kerosene, he had no light, he had no electricity. And when he approached with his dog, there was a light coming from under the door, and. You know, most people would have run away at that point. I think I would have done, but he went forward and he said, you know, who is there? And no one answered, just that echo behind him. So he opened the door and it was unlocked and it shouldn't have been unlocked. He had the only key and he walked in, the dog ran in and immediately the dog was flattened by something. It just fell to the floor. He followed the dog, angry that someone had hurt his dog and the same thing happened to him. And all he found himself an incredible pain with lots of, you know, all the water leaving the body, a lot of the water leaving the body, you know, water is memory and, um, you know, a huge shock. And it was only when a voice spoke to him, this is the way he describes it, um, that said, are you ready to work? A very throaty voice, you know, sounded ancient. And then all the, then the pain went and the information came through and he was basically ordered to write these things down, to draw the things that he was told. And he was basically on an eight day and eight night journey of a multi-dimensional experience. And I know this sounds very, you know, I know this sounds impossible to believe. I and mean, after all, I've done a Mind Body Spirit magazine for 20 years. I, I've, I've heard many things, but this was to get this information in eight days. The details is absolutely extraordinary. And we've verified them over the last 30 years. We've actually verified them. Uh, we've also looked at um, the charts in terms of amino acids, in terms of future projection. There's so many different ways. All I can tell you is it works. And it came in revelation the same way the I Ching came in revelation, the, the Chinese I Ching. And if you look at the I Ching, it gives you all possible human experience, these Six these six-lined hexagrams that contain so much information in a graphic form. This is part of this correlation to genetics, and it's part of the human design system. And, yeah. you know, all I can say is try it and see, see what you think. See if you recognize yourself, which you will. It's, a, it's very humbling and relieving at the same time to at last have answers that you've had questions for your whole life and that they fit, that you know they fit. Oh, lovely. I'm looking forward to what I'm going to find out. <laughs> well, you, whenever you're ready, uh, Cynthia I, Rose, I'm here. I can I'm, go ready. Into it whenever you're ready. I'm ready. I have oh. no secrets. <laughs> All right. Well, if we, so if, you, if, if anyone looks at a, the normal human design chart, they'll see there are nine squares and triangles. And for most people, some of those triangles and squares will be colored in. What's colored in is what we call the true self. It's the side of us that is always, always there. It never goes away. It's always there. And the, the white areas are where we're here to learn, where we're here to find out things, where we're here to pick up things. So in your chart, for example, there are seven of the um, squares and triangles white. That doesn't mean they're empty. It means they're open. That actually means they're full of information. Um, for example, Cynthia, your, your mediumship, you know, one of the things that we can see in terms of your ability to access what's going on in others is the, what we call the splenic center on the left. It's open. It's a triangle on its side. And you can pick up what's going on with people physically, like the best kind of Diagnose, uh, uh, someone who can diagnose what's going on with someone 
because you amplify that whatever it is in yourself the same way you can pick up different identities if, if you look at your friends in that diamond in the middle is a G center a sense of identity and you'll have lots and lots of different kinds of friends. You know, if you brought all yeah. your friends together in the room, they wouldn't want to talk to each other, not all of them. They would separate into little groups. My whole and life, you absolutely, can... yep. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, the thing to do, by the way, if you ever get in that situation, don't ever try to talk to them all at once. Go to one group after another, and then they will recognize the you they've always known, because you don't, you're not here to have a fixed, identity you take in the identities of others you take in people really deeply and you take them in in terms of healing there is a the 25th uh, gate there there's just one aspect and this is about healing it's about recuperation it's about tuning into those people that are still perhaps in shock and need to come back from that and that's that's the identity picking that up filtering that unconsciously all the time in people Oh, and we have to go for a break. I'm so excited. Well, okay. hold on. We'll be All back right. in two minutes. Everything's okay. right on so far. <laughs> <laughs> Your conscious lifestyle on steroids. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. Ohm Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment. A philanthropic organization, their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Connect at ohmtimes.com. Ohm Times, creating a more conscious lifestyle. Hello, I'm Sandy Sedgbeer, host of Ohm Times Magazine's flagship radio show, What is Going On? My passion is sifting through information, research, and innovations from new thought teachers, speakers, and researchers, pushing back the boundaries of what we know about life, energy, metaphysics, and the universe. I love shifting perceptions about who we are, why we're here, and how quickly impossible becomes normal when we open our minds, expand our awareness, and accept that the only limits that exist are those we place upon ourselves. So if you're the kind of forward-thinking, eager investigator of what lies beyond the current reality that most perceive, why not make a date to come play with me in the field of possibilities at 4 p.m. Pacific Time, 7 p.m. Eastern Time every Thursday, and together we can discover what's really going on. Hi, I'm Danica Patrick. Watching my nieces grow, play, and learn is amazing, but not every child gets to be carefree. One in six kids in the U.S. are hungry. This breaks my heart, and it's something that Feeding America is working to change. Each year, the Feeding America network of food banks rescues billions of pounds of good food that would have gone to waste and gives it to families in need. To help, visit feedingamerica.org. Brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. Okay, we were just getting into it with Richard Beaumont. We're talking about human design, and he's telling you all about me. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed, I am, Cynthia. So let me let me let me see about the this link to occult knowledge. You have that in the very top center in the sixty first gate. This is this is the mysteries. This is the inspiration from the mysteries that that draws you to to look at that to see what that's all about. So, and to bring it out in a, in a way that others can understand. So this is a kind of the channeling side for, for you in a way. It's really having, uh, being able to, at certain times, rationalize this mysterious information that comes through in the conceptual mind, which is that other square, under, the other triangle underneath it. But you've got a very exceptional um, mind in the fact that you have you have three gates in there, the 47, which is about understanding the confusion of the past. 
the four, which is logical. It's of being able to find the formula to make sense of things in a logical and rational way. And then the 43, this is the acoustic side of you. So this is a side of you that tunes to frequencies. It's a very, very multidimensional aspect, the 43. It's almost like it's, you can take in information and you can put it into different places and then call upon it. So you basically have a way of reading all kinds of information that comes through the mind in all three possible ways and eventually to be able to share that. In the sharing, you can see the throat is open. That, that square, that white square, it's open, but it filters revelations in the 33, the details and the facts in the 62, and this highly mutative side that can really make a difference in terms of society. It's, it's the, the side of you that, that wants to give voice to those that are not heard is one way to say it. It's always aware of the emotional field that it looks into some of the darkest and some of the lightest places. So highly, highly individual in its eloquence and its ability to, um, yeah, to, to be able to speak at the right time to let people understand something that they've not been aware of before. So that's just a quick look. The, 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 the type, there are four types of human being. You are a projector. You have a different kind of aura to the other three types. You have a focused, penetrating, and absorbing aura. And in that sense, you really zero in on the other. This life for you is very much about the other. You're very transpersonal. In other words, you're here to meet certain allies in this life, allies that you've met in previous lives. And the form, the... the, the the whole idea is to guide people, to guide them into aligning with themselves. Um, there is a life force in this design from the root, the brown square up to the brown triangle, the emotional system. So you are very sensitive, highly sensitive, both physically and at a frequency level. Um, you know, there is this Mm, this drive, this, this, this drive to feel and to feel at the most sensitive level. So sometimes you need a hug, you know, you just want to be held. And sometimes you don't want to be touched at all, you know, it's just too much to have anyone near you. Um, this is, this is an interspecies channel, so there's a connection with animals, you know, perhaps yes. with cats or um, that you can, you, can, you can really, not only can you connect with them and they can connect with you, but you have a way of touching them. This is about touching and smell as well. So it's a, the ability to, you know, really tune into them. Um, oh, yeah, I can, I, can, I, I, can, I can understand dogs, my dog and my kitty. You know, we have two mm -hmm. each. And they will talk yeah. to me. And, you know, and then I heard there was something called animal communication. And I was like, isn't that normal? Doesn't everybody do that? <laughs> I, just no. didn't, I just took it for granted, you know, like animals are, and I had the most amazing experience with dolphins and turtles. I'm really feel, I am highly sensitive. Absolutely. And the, the oversensitivity, I can remember coming off the stage one time and I had sang this song and I'd felt the presence, I think of other, of family as I, I sang this song and people were coming up and, you know, thanking me for the song and saying how it moved them. And I was so, um, I don't know, I felt almost transported. And I, it took me a few minutes to come back. And so I didn't have that gracious way of saying, oh, thank you. And I, it was like, where, where did I go? What did I do? And it, it, I had to yeah. learn about that with myself. Yeah. Exactly. In terms, of, in terms of speaking, for example, there is no... Uh, context within the throat because the throat is open so it's much better if other people start the conversation and then you comment upon what they've said and you point out what they've missed you point out the details you point out um, you know the, the memories that are there you know it's a way of you being able to um, be on point when the context is given from outside but but something else the the this 1949 channel channel of synthesis it's also your ability to tune into the needs of the people. 
which you can't help but do, you know, you, you feel for them, you see them, but at, at the same time in tuning into them and you can get lost in them and forget your own needs. So it's, it's important to keep that balance between your own needs and the needs of the people. And that's to do with, with everything. It's to do with food. You know, you'll enjoy, uh, do you enjoy cooking? Love cooking. The, the gate of the foodie in the 19 is there. So food is very important. And, and for the food to be, uh, to be really right for you, there has to be, you know, you like to, you like to touch the food. Uh, and in touching the food while you're cooking, you know whether you want to include it or how much or if it's, if it's um, you know, the right consistency. There's an innate ability there to, uh, to tune into the food through touch, and it's important when you're eating um, to do that. So cooking is absolutely brilliant. Well done. Well done. <laughs> um, it's, it's, the, it's a channel of uh, marriage and divorce, you know. It's, it's really about this, this connection, wanting, to, wanting in a way mm, to move through the... Through the the world, but also to have this desire to be touched by God. The 37 is open. This is a, this is a, uh, a gate in the solar plex in the ground triangle on the right that really is there to be open to hmm, open to the forces, if you like. This is, there is a movement in you, a part of the mystical channels. The 1949 is a mystical channel in itself. It leads through to the 3740, which is a mystical bridge, and then into the initiation of the true self. In other words, coming to find that innocence within us that cannot be tainted by anything on the outside. And it's, it's part of an awakening mm, channel or, or movement of energy, which is obviously why you've got into what you've got into. Um, because it's, it's, it's in you, you know, in the way it's kind of looking, trying to fill in the gaps, but really trying to have that that experience where you are aligned to the spiritual. Um, you are born on the cross of alignment. We each come in on a particular trajectory, on a particular cross. The cross of alignment you come in on is to be able to take advantage of the unexpected. Take advantage of the unexpected. So again, when the channeling started happening to you, you know, you could, you could handle it conceptually. You know, you could find a way to make sense out of it but you could also align to it and allow it to come through stronger, you know, because of the sensitivity, because of the openness uh, through the head and the ajna. Um, so I can see, I can see lots of different aspects that have come out in you because of this. Um, one of the things to bear in mind is that you're a, you have a five one profile. If you look at the top of the list of numbers, top of the black list of numbers, 28.5. To the um, to the left, on the top, on the right, the 33.1. So five one profile. This is a heretic investigator. That's the frame. Okay. So Where's the five people, one on this? Does on this chart? If, if you go to the top of the list of numbers, uh, the list of black numbers, right at the top, yep. you'll find 20, 28.5, and that's the five. Okay, and if you go to the other side, at the top of the list of red numbers, it's 33.1. So the lines oh, are five and... I, I got you. I'm got with it? you now. Okay, yep, yep. So okay. This, this, is, this is someone who people have a great deal of expectation about. You know, your parents would have had a great deal of expectation about you and what you're going to do and who you're going to become. And, you know, it's about dealing with those expectations in a practical way giving people practical information. Having said that, you know, in terms of your childhood, it would have been much easier for you to have important connections outside of the family. This is a, this is a, a profile, a, a costume that you wear that can be a stranger of consequence. You know, you're standing in an airport waiting for a plane. Someone starts talking to you. You say a few things to them, and what you say can really change their life. I mean, you are here as a transpersonal uh, life to connect to certain friends and people from past, to give them information and to receive information from them. I've had people tell me uh, that uh, through everything I've ever done. Um, you know, um, I used to do people's hair when I was 20 and I one lady throw a bunch of money at me and <clears throat> say I was just about to 
uh, make the biggest mistake of my life. I don't need my hair blow dried. Gave me a whole bunch of money and ran out. And yeah, you know, my you mind's are. eye, I could I could see somebody was about to go to an airport and get on a plane. And but before that, I was I was sharing a bunch of information with her and talking. And I was like, why am I talking about this? You know, my mind was saying, why am I sharing all this? And then away yeah. she went. But that, it's, that's happened to me on planes. It's happened to me on buses. It's it's you, um, you. you it will do, and, and you, it's not like you know what you're about to say. You don't. The, the, what's red no, in the I chart don't. and the gates yeah. are, 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 complete, are all red. So around the throat center, the 62, 12, and 33, they're all in red. It means that you don't know what you're about to say, and you don't know what you said until you've said it, and then you can reflect upon it. <laughs> but it's really, you know, it really is like, like channeling because it comes through you. You're, you're really very much a design that scans what's going on in front of you and zeroes into certain people. It's really, you know, you're very good on a one-to-one -one basis um, and can and basically can bring a lot out of people. You know, people end up telling you secrets and stories they've never told anybody, don't, haven't they? Yeah, that's happened to me yeah. too, yeah. It, it's just something that, you know, you're designed as a guide and you're designed to be sensitive to the people. Um, but just make sure you're, you know, you don't work too hard. This is a, yeah, as a design, you're, you're really designed to guide others, not to get down in, you know, with the, with the shovel and start shoveling stone. You know, you're, let, the, let the generators around us do that. You know, they're the, they're the ones that can really have the energy to go on and on. You're here to come in, guide them, leave, put your feet up, come in and check up on them, you know, that kind of thing. Not working too much, you know, really. Uh, having naps in the middle of the day is a good idea. You know, looking after yourself, making sure. I mean, you know you, you can't take uh, allopathic medicine very well. You know, the doctor's medicine, you're going to feed this, you're going to feel the side effect because you're very, you know, the, the body needs uh, maintenance in terms of acupuncture and homeopathy and light medicine and the energy medicines we've got now. There's a wonderful alternative um, therapies that you can benefit from much better than any of the drugs from um, the doctors. Do you agree? Oh, absolutely. I, I, I am, have learned a lot of what you're saying. I have learned the hard way and yes. I was so open, so empathic, so sensitive when I was younger. And I didn't know that I was picking up on everybody else all the time because it was just, coming through me and then what you know it would just happen all the time and I have learned how to deal with that so I can recognize people as being empathic right away oh you've got that going on I see that because I've dealt with that yeah. and 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 also <clears throat> um, the my sensitivity you know even to um, you know I you don't know this about me but I went through you know having a serious injury and um, going a long time before I found out that I could get it fixed surgically and and I did all this alternative work and you know I just say to people now I'm a delicate flower <laughs> yes. I'm, I'm a delicate flower and I take care of myself I, I don't I can remember sitting at a, a gathering and everybody was eating a bunch of junky food and I was hungry and they said well surely you should eat some I said no I think I'll wait thanks Till I get home and well, because it wouldn't have done me any good no it wouldn't if, if, if we've got your time of birth correct and time matters I'm now going beneath the surface of the chart uh, regarding the food there needs to be a certain nervous energy going on around you before you're hungry you know you could you're someone who can eat on the on the way to somewhere you don't have to sit down at the table formally you know then it's good that there's a, some kind of nervous energy around you that, that, you know, creates the need for you to eat and helps you to digest it. Do you recognize that? Oh, I never thought of that. But yeah, because people always talk about the need to sit down and have a very quiet, relaxed, uh, you know, and nah. I think well, I, I, as long as I'm feeling peaceful about it, as long as I'm feeling ready to eat, then I'm okay. I just can't eat fast. No, no. I mean, it's, it's, it's necessary to touch the food when you're eating. It will really make a difference. Um, and, and you need to be 
Yeah, sensitive to your own emotional state. Number one. Number Always. one. Always. First, the, I cannot. I cannot be there for. Cannot be there for anybody else unless I. I can't do my work. I. I feel like in order to do this work, then it's a lifestyle for me, and I really take care of myself, and I honor. You know, I have to do my meditation. I. I music is important for me that I have that expression. Yeah. And so it's like some people will go and they'll just like work one thing. And I've realized that, you know, for me, it's like I've got to have some of this and I've got to have some of that and I've got to be balanced. Because the worst thing for me would be to have somebody in my office and say, gee, I don't feel clear. If I don't feel clear, you know, whatever that means to me, I've always understood since about 21, 22, it's like if I'm clear, I'm okay. If I'm not clear. And for me, I think that means like everything is flowing. Absolutely. Oh, we're getting cued for a break. I'm just having a great time hearing this fantastic okay. chart with human design, <laughs> Richard Beaumont. Hold on. Okay. Free your mind with Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. Ascending Hearts is no ordinary dating site, but a spiritual dating site with a purpose to link you with your soulmate. We engineer the serendipity so you can trust that you will attune with someone that has the same matching vibration as you. Ascending Hearts, the conscious dating site for the spiritually aware. Try Ascending Hearts for free. AscendingHearts.com. Tune in to the Practical Intuitive Mind, Body, Spirit for the Real World with me, host Robin Fritz, Mondays at 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 Eastern. I'll cover personal and business intuition, animal communication, mediumship, space clearing, past life regression, shamanic insights, energy healing, soul choice, and more, all to help you tap your own intuitive and healing skills. No ifs, ands, or buts. The average time a resume spends on an HR manager's desk is seven seconds, and most of them are tossed aside. Now imagine if one of those resumes belonged to Yasmin, who was... Living in a shelter, juggling three jobs. I had to be resilient. That's something that you can't teach. We rely so much on a resume, yet it could never tell the full story of someone who... Had to be independent and take initiative. And that's how I handle every project I get. Discover new ways to develop great talent at gradsoflife.org. Brought to you by Grads of Life and the Ad Council. Okay, we're back. And having a great time. So would here. you like me to give you a little, a little, uh, a little tip, Cynthia Rose? Oh, sure. One of the things that you might find, if you haven't already got it, is because of this feeling of vulnerability, because of your sensitivity, because of your openness. Um, what I find really people enjoy is if you get one of these um, wooden rings or um, metal rings where you can drape cloth over the bed, whether it's Egyptian cotton or silk or whatever it may be, um, a bit like you'd see on a four-poster bed, you know, but actually you can put it on any kind of bed if you have that ring attached to the ceiling. It means that you would go in, you go through the material in order to get to your bed and there would be a barrier between you and the rest of the world. And that I think you would feel very comforted by. Oh, you're talking about those, like when they would have the four-poster beds, you would hang the cloth down all around the bed. Yeah. Yeah, That's I've it. always loved I've always loved those since I was a kid. Yeah, well, <laughs> kids, I, I've spoken to, to, to children when I've, I've done readings for, for children, and I, I've suggested it to their... I remember suggesting it recently to a woman when I was teaching in Bulgaria. And I said, your, your daughter would love this, you know. And she said to the daughter, she asked, you know, would you like that? And the daughter was seven. And she said, Mommy, I've been asking you this since I was four. <laughs> 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 so it's, it's really, you know, you're, you're, there is no fully conscious anchor in the chart. There is no fully conscious connection to the body either in the chart. So, you know, strong, you feel energies moving by you like, wow, what the hell was that? And 
when you're when you try to tune into who you are again there's nothing to hold on to so it's really you know you really are very very open um, and the way to operate as a projector is to wait for the invitation and to accept it if it fits with you if it if it fits with your sensitivity if it fits with your emotions and 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 also if it doesn't to say no but the most important thing is to wait out the feelings because the feelings change you're, you're an emotional being you're a highly adrenalized emotional being so being spontaneous isn't something that's designed that's, that's correct for you it's about feeling into something for long enough checking into that invitation over a period of time maybe three different times do I still want to do that or do I not have I gone off the idea you know allowing yourself to really settle into that clarity that you mentioned about whether it's right for you or not but it, you do need time for that patience is a, is a, is really important and then you get to accept the right things be in the right place around the right people if you're not in the right place this open g center this white diamond in the middle there because it's open environment is incredibly important if you're in the wrong place you're around the wrong people and if you're around the wrong people you're never going to be recognized you're not going to find your allies you know it's not going to be a life where you can shine out this is you're you're a projector projectors can shine and you're a fifth line projector the epitome of shining <laughs> you know so you know you're you're someone who can get through to the whole world you know you have a universalizing aspect to you that is also very deep you know you do study you do like to go into the details and into the nitty-gritty of something if you're really interested in it you're designed to do that and to and to stay with that but you do need to be in the right place so place is important um have you discovered that absolutely uh, absolutely um and the thing about going into the deep and you know this like, for me it's kind of interesting because my husband and i are both scorpios and i know some of, somehow this fits in with your your the way it was built but i know it's not astrology but i was saying to him i'm just i'm not a you know some people are looking going oh look at that pretty pillow and look at this i don't go through life like that i've discovered for me it is a feeling i feel my way yes. through life I don't yes. see life the same as everybody else. So when it comes to like decorating something or visual things, I usually pull somebody in to help give me a little reflection of what I think I'm seeing because I'm clairvoyant, but I'm not whatever it is in this life here. I just know that I see everything through feeling. So my clairvoyance is seen through feeling as well. And Absolutely. so, yeah. so and I just feel like I, um, the, the whole thing, this whole thing about waiting for for things to be, I, I don't know if I completely understand that, but it makes a lot of sense because, you know, some people say, oh, well, you know, you've got to like visualize what you want and do what you want and put it out there. And I think that's true for a lot of people. But for mm -hmm. me, it's about going, hmm, this feels right, you know. Exactly. Um, okay. Exactly. And then it, if I try and set into motion the way things are going to go it, it doesn't go but then all of a sudden like you know for the radio show somebody approached me to do a radio show Perfect. and i and exactly. i said well you know i'm not i'm not really ready for a show right now and then uh, you know i ended up there was this ended up being a guest on a, on a show on this network I, the exact wednesday one year before that this started mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it was kind of like, it was like I was listening and I was get hearing, you know, that it was time for me to do this. And because I'm so open doing a show, I was like, oh, well, gee, I don't know. Like things will just come out of my <laughs> mouth. <laughs> but then it was like, okay, well, well I guess things, they're going to come out of my mouth. That's the way that works. <laughs> that's the way that works. And, and, you know, you're universalizing through this radio show. I mean, you're and you're zeroing in on those things that are interesting for you um in terms of this um this openness um one thing i can i can say for example when i speak about environment for you 
um, you know, you know that you're, if you change, if you think about your clothes, you have lots of different styles of clothes and types of clothes. And, you know, you, you put on a, a business suit and you become the business woman. You know, you, 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 you put on your old clothes just to hang around in, in, inside and you, you become more relaxed. You know, you, you can put on different clothes. It makes a big difference to you. And likewise, the environment, you know, you set up a room and then later on you want to redecorate it change it. Um, there's going to be this play with the environment and play with placement. So, for example, you would have enjoyed probably kaleidoscopes uh, when you were younger and um, being able to put jigsaw puzzles together and make um, montages, very good at montages to really let montages the Montages maybe, but, but jigs jigsaw puzzles, no. <laughs> what, a, what about uh, kaleidoscopes? What about I like kaleidoscopes. kaleidoscopes. I like kaleidoscopes, but jigsaw puzzles, you know, like people okay. like them the more they're too like detail wise. And for me, even reading oh. is when I read, I have I very focus in very deeply. So I don't read very fast and I focus in yeah. very deeply and take it in. It's like other stuff is going on at another level. And I find that detailed yeah. things, you know, my husband would be better at that. But um, I think he is a. Um, a manifesting generator or something I don't remember. Oh, so right, okay. somebody so he's, yeah, he's so, always doing something. Somebody somebody told me that told me that once. All I knew was they this is how I heard a little bit about it is they said you have to wait uh, to be invited to do things and I thought well then how does a person create their life? Well really for me it's like I'm in service to humanity how I can help and I still need to take care of myself I'm not saying selfless like I have to look after my own needs but I think I have an understanding that it's just like let's see what's next let's see what comes and well, take absolutely. care of myself and while and it happens yeah, yeah you're designed to take care of yourself you you know you're designed to, to shift uh, from one thing to another from one alliance to another uh, if it's better you know, so basically to find the best, you know, to 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 make sure that you do get in the right place around the right people. This is important. So the best environment for you in terms of living would be an environment probably in the suburbs or somewhere between something and something. So not in the country, not in the city, but in between, not by the beach, but near the beach in between. So you can point to people, you can point people towards the city, you can point people towards the, uh, the sea or towards the country. It's really about direction and being in between. When you were younger, you would have liked to play perhaps in the lobby or in the hall rather than in the room, to be in between, to be in two, two rooms. Do you recognize that? I don't I actually don't remember that and I did grow up near the sea and spent many mm -hmm. I used to come home with my with rocks uh, it was this very particular quiet little beach that I would walk down to we were about two blocks from the beach and mm -hmm. that had a monumental effect on me and my mom would say your pockets are always breaking because they were full of rocks and shells all the time <laughs> yeah well exactly it's, it's it's you, you bringing your environment home with you. <laughs> I mean, there is this side of you that has this pressure to, to start new things if they're worth it, you know, to really uh, start new things based on the success of other things that have gone before. Um, so you in that way, you are, uh, you know, to be very sensitive to, to feeling into the needs of the people, but also to be able to start new projects, not finish them, by the way. Not finish them. You're not here to finish them. You know, other people can come and do the finishing, but you're here to get them to feel, you know, what you're feeling so and, 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 and help them to bring their energy to whatever it is that you're, that you're uh, starting. Does that ring a bell? Well, if I, yeah, yeah, it could. It could. If I, if I pass from this realm, you know, if I pass from this realm knowing that I've helped people, and people feel more like they're living their true life, and I've been part of that, then that's good enough for me um, because I'm already honoring what I'm passionate about. I don't know how to not be passionate about something. I, I, I just yeah, don't. I, I, I mean, the, the, there is, in, in talking about 
contact with the dead, there is a lot of um, mystical information in human design. It's not it's not astrology. The, there are the global cycles. We can we can turn. We see the way the wheel turns. There is a wheel in human design. There's also a global cycle wheel. If you turn it a different way, um, and so we know we're coming to a big change. You can you we know things are speeding up. You know we know what's coming after that, and we can also we can also know what happens after death to some degree. Um, mechanically, there is this very important aspect of dying where you need to leave the body, you know, pretty much untouched near where they died for up to three days for them to experience what we call the Bardo states. Um, so I was with a dear friend of mine who died in January and I knew this information and I followed him in path out of the body and what amazed me was the perfection of the timing I mean absolutely beyond it's an incredible thing to to know the timings and know what's what the person or at least the the milieu of what the person is going through we can't know the absolute content but it's we know the themes um, and then in terms of human design we the personality leaves and does ascend it descends if you die correctly it descends it descends into um a collection almost like we go home back to a collection of personalities you know a, a bundle where we come from and inform that bundle so there is this connection between the living and the dead that we can see in human design um and at certain points those people who have incarnated they are the the crystals, the personalities that will always reincarnate, they will come back again. Um, that's their job. You know, about a small percentage of them, there could be millions of personalities in one bundle, and there's just a very small percentage that incarnate. So, from my point of view, this points to the preciousness of life and how unique this life is. Because each time the personality comes back, it comes into a different body. Um, like we're, we're a mixture of body and, and spirit, if you like, and we really are, you know, and, and the spirit is something that's been around for billions of years. Um, the idea of dying is not really something that we're that used to, because, you know, when we're outside the body, there's no time. It's timeless, you know, a virtual yes. immortality. Yeah, well, um, in, in my work, you know, in my work, like I have felt people come through that just feel like this beautiful light, like an orb of light, this beautiful light. And I say, fantastic, great to meet you. And your loved one won't recognize you if I say I've got an orb of light here. <laughs> so what was your personality? You know, show me what you looked like and, you know, project to me what it is you want me to know about you. Because there are some people that come through that are so brilliant um, I've mm -hmm. had some really amazing experiences. Seems to happen more with children too. That there, there is a, there is a beautiful. I don't know how to explain it. This beautiful golden light I'll feel or something. And it, I, I came to realize that 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 um, you know that also you have to realize that we're always going through the human mind. So you know, yeah. there's a part that my mind is not is not really understanding that's that that's the best I can get you know I see we're almost over and I want to make sure that we let people know how to get in touch with you um, thank you so thank much you. for for sharing your information so your website um, human design dot, dot info that's right human design dot info it will take people to the website where they can get a downloadable report that's something like between 120 and 130 odd pages just on them that's written out and it's got diagrams and everything else. So I've tried to make this science accessible and, and available to people. Uh, it's taken me years to, to write that report, but it's now available. So that's something I would recommend. They can get the information immediately. Um, and there's lots of different videos uh, that I've done that they can see previews about once they've got their chart, you know, it'll tell them aspects and they can look at the videos to see. So this is, they can know who they are. If they know who they are, things, it's just so much easier, you know, it's just so much easier. And there's a, an opening 
that happens. Thank you, Cynthia. Ben. Thank you, Rich. It was just fascinating, to, and all of it, everything except the jigsaw puzzle, but <laughs> but all of the. Uh, I should have said it all... that I thought that afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so Can much. Just... Hope maybe we'll see you in England, maybe. <laughs> okay. Yeah, sure. Good. <laughs> okay. Bye -bye for now. Thanks. Okay. Bye bye. Thank you.